All right, folks. So what we have here is we have to be able to understand what's going on. In this particular unit, we're going to focus on a couple of things. Specifically, before we begin to understand the domain and range, domain range and functions, we start off something called relations. What is a relation? Well, every graph, every equation, every table of values is a relation. So ultimately, that's where we're starting off. What is a relation? Every graph, every equation, and every table of values is a relation. Now, only special types of relations are actually functions. And this is where we're going to have to understand this. Domain and range, domain being the x values and range being the y values, can be expressed using either set notation or interval notation. So today we're going to work on just understanding what set notation or interval notation and interval notation is. Now, at the grade 11 level, you're expected to know the set notation. In mixed, we're starting with the same as the 3U, we're also doing 3M. We're going to start with set notation and how to identify all of these. Tomorrow we're going to work on these other concepts and these definitions tomorrow. Specifically today, we're going to look at examples of set and interval notation. So here's the first example. This is a number line, and you will remember number lines from our elementary days. In particular, a number line going horizontally, and then what you have is a closed circle dot and, num and a bold line going this way with an arrow that says it goes beyond. So how do we write set? Well, first of all, the most important part is this bracket. What is this bracket? Well, what it looks like is you will have a rounded bump, a pointy bump, and a rounded bump. That's the large version of it. You learn to write it pretty quickly. And so a set notation starts off with a set bracket. So it's kind of like the capital of a sentence. Uh, the beginning of a sentence starts with a capital. And then we have X belongs to real. So now those of you just watching that, let's try that again. So x is this whole thing across here. Think of the x and y axis. The x runs horizontally, so we're going to any horizontal line segment, um, uh, sorry, any sort of linear graph, this kind of line graph here, we will have a, we will represent as x. X, now watch how we draw it. So we quickly draw the next piece. So we draw, that's right, you saw that. First you draw C and then you draw the middle. That is the means belongs to. And then now we're going to watch how we draw the real. We draw one bar, a second bar, and then an R with the first bar. Let's try that again. One bar second bar, and draw the R with the first bar. Now, let's talk about what this means in words, because remember, this is the representation mathematically. Mathematicians are international, is understood internationally, but the thing is, we need to be able to transfer this in words. In words, this means the set of X belongs to, so real, numbers. Now real numbers are basically any number you can graph on a number line. Next you have this thing and this line here means such that. Basically what that means is that there is a restriction. It is saying it's every real number in the world such that. So some sort of restriction is placed. What is the restriction? Well if we look here we're starting at negative 3 with a closed circle and we're going to the right and we keep going forever and ever. So it starts at negative 3 and goes on forever ever in a positive direction. Where does it go to? Think Buzz Lightyear folks, that's right, to infinity. This goes on from negative 3 all the way to positive infinity. So how do we write this? Well, we say that all the x values that we see on this graph that's in bold is greater than or equal 
to negative 3. So again, let's write that in words. In bold, you will see that x is greater than or equal to negative 3. And this is known as set notation. Okay? Set notation, folks. So again, when you read it, it is the set of all numbers such that x, sorry, set of all numbers x that belongs to real numbers such that x is greater than or equal to negative 3. And close the bracket. So greater than or equal to negative 3. Now, not only do we have to be able to do this in set notation, but moving on, when you move further on, you're going to have to understand interval notation. Interval notation is more familiar in logic identifiers and using it in computer language and even in using simple coding techniques. Uses interval notation to identify certain features. So I present to you the interval notation, but we're going to use this as the bonus in this unit. So you'll be asked occasionally to do it, but you don't have to learn it, but it's a good idea to learn it because it's much easier to read. So let's look at interval notation. Interval notation is as follows. Ready? X belongs to, so exactly the same way here, but you don't have to have these funny curly brackets. Now, what does it belong to? Well, we have to say where it starts and where it finishes. Where does it start? It starts at negative 3. Does it start exactly at negative 3? Yes, it does because of this closed circle. So think of it as a hard bracket. When it's closed, it's hard. It closes. So it closes from negative 3 all the way up to infinity. And infinity goes to infinity and beyond. Does beyond have an end? Well, no, folks, it doesn't. So anything around infinity will always be round. So next to infinity, we always have a soft bracket, a round bracket. Okay, so again, now let's look at the bottom one before we continue with this. So this is what we're looking at, folks. This is set notation in blue, and this is interval notation as well as in blue listed here above with the word interval. Now, let's look at the next part. We're going to say, example, given this. So let's read this sentence. So given the set of x belongs to real such that x is less than 2 and we're done. So we need to graph this on the number line and write in interval notation. Now for example, in this case we're given the number line. But let's say you weren't given a number line in a question you had to draw it. The question becomes, how many numbers is enough? Well, I'll tell you right now, folks, I need to see. The idea is to keep with seven. Think of lucky number seven. Seven numbers on the number line, seven ticks, and that should be enough to identify what's happening on the number line. Now, don't forget, you can't draw me a short, bold line. It can't be a number, you can't begin negative three, for example, right here and keep going that way. And I wouldn't begin with 2 and start it over here because 2 and less than 2, that doesn't make any sense. So make sure there's some numbers around on both sides. One where it's not bolded out and others where it is bolded. So here we go. We're to graph this. We're to graph this at 2. Now, looking over here at 2, are we going to make it open or are we going to make it closed? My suggestion is you use a, you use a different color. You can make the open circle right on the number line given, so you can do that in a different color, or you can do it above. Either or is acceptable, folks, but just make sure that you uh, draw me an open circle. Why is it open? Because we're including a number really, really close to 2, but not exactly 2, because it does not equal it, it just means it gets really close to it. So we're going to draw it going in this direction. So these are all the numbers that are less than 2. So we can draw it there. Or if we draw it on the number line, make sure it's nice and thick with the arrow at the end. Make sure that the arrow goes beyond the number line, folks. So make sure this goes beyond. So this means that x is less than 2. All right? Now, 
we have to draw this as interval notation. How do we draw it as interval notation? Well, we write x belongs to. Now, where do we start? We're starting here. Where is this? This is off and beyond. Well, it's beyond in negative direction. So round bracket, negative infinity, because that's where it is going. It's going towards negative infinity, in negative in an infinity direction in the negative way. Then there's infinity in the positive way, like we did in the previous example. But in this case, we're looking infinity in the negative way. So negative infinity up to and including what number? What number is it going up to and including? Well, it's going up to and including the number 2. Do we include the number 2? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are we including the number 2? Let's look again. There's an open circle. There's no equal to underneath. Are we including 2? No, we're not. So what kind of bracket goes here? That's right, a rounded bracket. All right, folks. So this is the end of this particular section here. We're going to move on to the other part of the handout. So back again. Hopefully you caught on to this part. And we're going to move on to the next page, or the next part. So the next part says graph and write in set notation. Graph and write in set notation. X belongs to real such that it goes from negative 6 to negative 1. Now notice here, negative 6 has what kind of bracket? 1 has what kind of bracket? This is interval notation. I want you to convert it to a graph and then convert it to set notation. So let's do that. So at negative 6, we're going to put a solid circle around negative, at negative 6. Okay, solid closed circle. Don't forget to use another color. And then, or on top, and then we're going to go right up to negative 1. Negative 1 has to have an open circle. So again, whether we draw it on the number line or above the number line, at least I can see it, open circle at negative 1, Close circle at negative 6 because the bracket says closed at negative 6, open at negative 1. And that's what we drew here. For set notation, how do we write that? Well, we're saying the set of x belongs to real such that what's happening? Well, it goes from negative 6 up to negative 1. Now look at all the way I wrote this. I want you to understand this. Negative 6 is the smallest number that or equal to. That's what this means. x, all the numbers are on the number line x and there's always an x after the such that. If there's an x in the beginning and the such that there must be an x at the end. x is and the biggest number is negative 1, so it is the largest number. You'll notice the largest opening, but it doesn't equal that. So we're looking at all the numbers from negative 6 to negative 1. Okay, so when we're looking at this again one more time, x belongs to real such that it goes from negative 6 uh, less than or equal to x, less than negative 1. So when you're reading it, it looks like that. But folks, what you're really reading from is from this variable, from x. Because it's x is saying that it's the horizontal line. So from the horizontal line, x is actually bigger than, that's right, bigger than or equal to negative 6. And x is less than negative 1. So that's how you actually read this function, okay? Or this, sorry, this set notation. Let's go on to a couple more and see if you can understand what's going on here. Let's start off with the next one. The next one being, let's start off with this one and look at what this is saying. So you're reading it from here, which is, that's right, negative infinity, all the way up to, oh, wait a minute, it stops or has a, blurp or a pause or a hole if you want at one and then it keeps going on all the way to infinity. What does that mean? Well, that means that in set notation it's really all real numbers such that, such that what? What is actually happening here? Well, here folks there's like a hole. Well, what it means is that x is not 
does not include, so all the numbers are real, but what number is not included? That's right, it doesn't equal 1. So that's how you write set notation. And this next part, folks, is probably the only time I will say interval notation is actually worse than set notation because in interval notation, we have to write it like this. X belongs to, where does it start? It starts at, that's right, negative infinity, round bracket, and goes up to 1, that's right, up to 1, and then it's a round bracket 1, and then we have a connector. A connector, that means or. See this? It, mathematically, this means or. So sometimes you forget what the symbol is, so I let you write the word or. If you can't remember the symbol, at least write the word or. And then it goes from or from what? From 1, but we don't include the 1. Remember, 1's not included. Up to infinity. Close the bracket. And this, folks, is how you write interval notation. See what I mean? It's the first time that interval notation is actually worse than set notation. All right, next part. Let's look at this. Ex this part, what is this actually saying? Well, this is like two sentences in one. All right, and we start with the set notation going from, or actually, let's do interval notation because interval notation is a lot easier. Let's go from interval. Interval says, okay, from negative infinity, or don't forget it, x belongs to, from negative infinity, soft bracket, remember at negative infinity it's soft, up to and including, not including, sorry, negative 4, so soft at four, negative 4, or, right, remember that you can use the symbol or the word, or from 2, but notice 2 is hard, so we want a hard 2, all the way up to infinity, and it's soft. And that's how we write this out. Okay, now how do we write that in set notation? Well, folks, same idea. Set bracket, x belongs to real, such that x is less than negative 4, or... And you can write that in words or in the symbol. X is greater than or equal to 2. And that's exactly how you would write this. So again, you go from X is less than negative 4 or X is greater than or equal to 2. So these are the different types of notations that are uh, ex you're expected to know. And you can complete the next two pages in your booklet for homework. All right, folks, take care. Have a numerical day.